Full Metal Jacket stars Matthew Modine, Adam Baldwin, Vincent D'Onofrio, and Lee Ermey. Written and directed by Stanley Kubrick, it was released on Blu-ray June 28, 2011, and runs 1 hour 57 minutes. Stanley Kubrick's unique take on the Vietnam War, based on Gustav Hasford's book The Short Timers, is still striking and holds up even today. It's essentially divided into two different films, recruit training on Paris Island, South Carolina for the first half, and in Vietnam for the second. It's a unique start, as it doesn't have much to do with the actual fighting. Even when we do get into Vietnam, it follows the main character, Private Joker, played by Matthew Modine, who is a field reporter. It's not until 58 minutes in, we get into the shit. Both parts are great, but I would go so far as to say the recruitment training is more interesting and entertaining to watch than getting into the war itself. Sergeant Hartman, played by Lee Ermey, the drill instructor's performance carries this entire first half. Motivation through intimidation, discipline, bullying and yelling. Lots and lots of yelling. Fantastic and authentic, as Ermey actually was a drill instructor at Paris Island, a Vietnam veteran and technical military advisor on the film. I feel this take on Vietnam had more emphasis on how the army turns these civilians, these 18-year-old kids, into mindless killers than focusing on the war itself. That feeling seemed to resonate with me, just how sick it is seeing these people turned into unfeeling killers. The first half really emphasizes this. The soldiers have a sense of pride and accomplishment when they kill the enemy, even women and children, as there was always a possibility of anyone being a guerrilla fighter against the invading Americans. All the recruits adopt the nicknames Sergeant Hartman insults them with all throughout training and takes them into battle. None of them refer to each other by their real names, except when Private Joker is helping Private Gomer Pyle, played by Vincent D'Onofrio, and calls him by his real name, Leonard. He gets it worse than anyone during training, and being called Gomer Pyle, I suppose turned out to be more of an actual insult than a nickname. Either that, or Private Joker didn't consider Leonard to be one of them. You can tell Kubrick demanded a lot from his actors. Long, elaborate, uncut shots of action and characters delivering dialogue. They're really impressive, and I can just imagine the frustration of having to redo a long, uncut take. The soundtrack is a mix of licensed and original music. Kubrick and company sifted through Billboard magazine's Top 100 each year between 1962 and 1968. Though the Rolling Stones painted black, used in the film's credits is not on the soundtrack CD I have. Kubrick's youngest daughter, Vivian, under the name of Abigail Mead, composed and programmed the original music on the Fairlight Series 3 and the CMI Series 1 computers. Bleak, haunting, and emotional, her score fits perfectly with the subject matter. One last thing I noticed. This movie has some of the finest dialogue recording I've ever heard. Trucks, tanks driving by, helicopters flying overhead, hell, people talking inside open helicopters, and the dialogue is perfectly clear. The end is pretty bleak. There can be no happy ending here. It doesn't end at the end of the war, with soldiers going home. The soldiers are still there when it ends, making you wonder what they have to face next and if they'll make it through. Overall, it's crazy to think the entire thing was filmed on location in England. This is one of the icons of filmmaking, not just in the war genre, but in filmmaking in general. 9.5 out of 10.